G'day and welcome back to Stitch Up and our series in Planet Coaster in the Studios Pack. And that's right, it's uh, Sunset Studios where the sun is always setting but never quite sets. <laughs> I don't think that's going to be a um, tagline for our theme park. I think I just uh, came up with that now and it's quite average indeed. Um, right, uh, yes. So I hope you enjoyed episode nine. Uh, this is episode 10, but in episode nine, uh, I decided not to do a time-lapse video. So I'm having a bit of a theory at the moment that um, I'll do most of the videos as time lapses because we do get a lot done in them and I think that's uh, that's the trend in Planet Coaster unless you're flabberleaky who can keep everyone's attention quite solidly in a real-time video for, you know, an hour and do, you know, 70 of them. Uh, oh, sorry, 90 as Sedona's just getting up to in City Skylines. Um, but uh, I am no flabberleaky. So uh, I think uh, watching me build in that episode nine, in fact, what I built primarily was one of these wall sections. Um, it's did take a while to get to get it what I wanted um, but I don't think that's enjoyable for anyone um, but um, look I did want to do some real-time uh, ones in between the, uh, the the time lapse I just want to show you people my style of building uh, I think I can work through my thoughts and I, I think depending on what section of the park I think it serves its purpose and I think last episode it was a nice little way to you know recap show 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 you um, my plans for the front of the park and how I want it to look when the guests arrive so in this episode, episode 10, we will, um, well, we'll start to wall off this entire section. In fact, this wall's now serving a nice purpose that when guests enter the front of the park, they head towards the, um, you know, what is supposed to be the hotel, but at the moment doesn't serve as a hotel, but the, the entrance building, the main building, um, and they go into that. Um, and so basically, as they walk through this section, they can see maybe at ground level, they can see the top of those studios at the back, that studio, one, two, three, I think studio four it might be i can't remember what i'm going to call that one and then what they'll end up doing is um uh, yeah just just getting a little peek at at the ride that they can't wait to go on so for some people coming back to the park they might have been on the ride and you know um, they can't wait to do it again see what's new or just go and enjoy different parts of the um the ride that they like from last time so uh, my goal is to uh, keep working on that studio's ride. I don't want it to be one that takes the entire um, uh, series to, to complete. I want it to be uh, relatively complete in a first stage um, in the next sort of few episodes. And then I would like it to be expanded um, as like a future expansion. So that's how I'm trying to, um, to, to work on that. There's just so much to work on. We, we have um, plans for Ratchet and Clank World, which are um, coming Coming along in my head, there's lots and lots of ideas, and I think it's going to be, um, I think that's going to be really cool. But I'm not going to start Ratchet and Clank World because this studio is taking so much of my other time just to get everything else um, nice. In fact, this little wall section was taking so much of my time just to get it looking nice. But I do like to make this uh, with a little bit of detail there. I like it to. Um, I like to, to, to iron out the details, get this all looking nice. I've decided to put in, um, yeah, so I've got my grey uh, wall, and my wall is a bit of a crypt wall. I've changed some of the colours, uh, and that's the wall, and it's got the gold lamps on the front, but not, oh, sorry, on, on, on the entrance plaza, but not on the surrounding walls. Uh, I don't know if this wall is going to go around the entire park, the main wall. Um, then we've got this garden wall. And I like that it's serving as like a boundary. It's saying to guests, look, you can jump it, but please don't. It's, it's a bit of a please stay off the grass sort of scenario. Um, and then we get some planting in. Now, a couple of things. Uh, I understand that if I put a tree right up against a what looks to be a seven foot wall, then yes, a guest could simply just come in at night time, climb the tree and jump over but it's Planet Coaster, so I won't let them do that. So yeah, so that's my theory on that one. Um, one thing here, I've tried to tie in the color of the planter boxes, and these planter boxes are exactly the same. They take, you saw me a moment ago take them from the back of the hotel or the, the internal plaza of the hotel. And uh, gee, I mean, I've put a lot of them down at the moment, but they really, it's a light blue. I've got like a, a bit more of a royal blue happening on the actual hotel. Um, when I tried to make them green or grey, they just blend away too much. So 
I've actually just decided just to keep them like that. Um, I don't want them to stand out, but I do want them to blend in nicely and somewhat form part of the building. I, I want it to be organic. I want it to flow through and I'd like, um, yeah, I'd like the, see, see, you can see the two blues there. They they look to clash, but then you've got this surrounding, that the baseline that surrounds the hotel, you've got that, which is also a grey. And I think between the, the two blues and that grey, I think those three colours all kind of tie in nicely. Um, it's a bit like wearing denim with a um, with a black top. Um, they they want to clash, but depending on the setting, it kind of just works. I hope that analogy works. Um, now, I couldn't uh, get this little bit of uh, pathway here. I couldn't get this to end any earlier because it was so thick. It was at, the, at that thickness, I couldn't get it to, to finish any earlier, not with um, any any bits of pathing um, issues. So I decided just to keep it and um, I work it into the final layout of the front plaza. Um, and yeah, I guess we start calling it an entrance plaza. Um, I've started to wall off this section. So I was also originally, if you cast your mind back to episode one, episode one, I took, I put the original path layout at that 45 degree angle, and then I, I popped in where the hotel would start. And I talked about this whole front section being a car park. And I was super excited because someone, I can't remember his name, and I mentioned it in, I think, episode one or two, but uh, a... a um, Steam Workshop creator had created um, uh, the, the the vehicles pack, and it was all the vehicles with their wheels and everything assembled, and it was all lovely. Um, and so I thought, well, I'm going to have a massive car park. I then decided against that. I thought, I don't want a car park. I don't like the idea that you just see a little bit of car park and you don't see the rest, and it's sort of out of sight. And it's, uh, I don't know. I also, I'm not big at creating. Uh, it, it, I don't mind other people doing it, and I'll watch them, but I'm not huge on creating se sections of parks that guests won't use. And um, so I, I'm, I've decided to change the front plaza, and we'll go through it in just a minute. Now, you can see here that the guests are clipping through... Um, clipping through that. Uh, what I'm doing at the moment is putting up with that and going, yep, I will solve that in the future. And in my mind, I'm thinking, gee, I hope I can solve it because I put so much other stuff in that if I have to go along and move all these walls, then that's just going to be a little bit of a nightmare. But, you know, if I have to do it, I have to do it. Um, I've always, wa always wanted some topiary or um, uh, some hedges to be surrounding the garden. Uh, it's, it's, it's supposed to you know, it's not meant to look like Versailles, but it's supposed to have this sort of grand kind of Versailles look to it. And a very structured garden is, um, you know, I think suits it. Um, just looking at this angle here, I, I put these in and I end up using them not so much as, um, they, they become garden beds as opposed to full plants. And I realise here that I need three, so I overlap them quite deep. And then I basically copy that across that whole sort of section. So if you were getting up for breakfast on ground floor and you opened your window and you looked outside, you'd see a little bit of grass if you look down. Um, I, I'm also, uh, well, grass or garden bed. Actually, this brings me to the point about grass. I am lost with how to put grass into this park. I, when I started the biome, I, I, I selected a custom biome because um, Studios doesn't come with its own biome and I didn't want, I wanted the tarmac. So my theory was if I want the new tarmac textures and I did and I want, um, you know, if I wanted those, then how do I um, go about and um, add a biome that's got grass as well? So I find that really daunting, trying to select a biome with the custom um, custom textures in the first couple of minutes of trying to plan out this massive YouTube series, uh, which is, you know, I want this to be, you know, my last series was 17 um, episodes, and I reckon I was probably, even if I even if I just kind of cut that park short and just try to finish it off, I reckon I'm looking at 25 episodes on that one. I want this to be a 40 episode series. I'm hoping we get there. I just want this to, be, yeah, I've, I I really want this to. Um, well, if I stay this enthused, it will get to 40. And, you know, I don't have a million views. I don't have a million subscribers, but I'm really enjoying doing this. But in those first few minutes of trying to select a biome and select your custom textures, um, I, I just, yeah, I, I think it's too daunting. However, I think there may be a way of doing it using a scenario editor. So I'm going to have a little play around with this. 
I think in the scenario editor, I could drop the park in, make the changes and export it or something like that. And the reason I think I can do this is because John T from Geekism uh, with his Pinewood Hills, he, he created Pinewood Hills. And then when the studios pack came out, he was able to go back and uh, he had a whole lot of bitumen that he had used um, art shapes and different things for to create the bitumen. And he was then able to go back and take those pieces out, put in the, the texture paint on the ground and vastly reduce the amount of pieces that we used in his park. And that would, of course, help performance. And so he did, I think he spent like a live stream or something going back and retrofitting a lot of that. So that gives me a little bit of hope. And just, by the way, I love when things work and just have a look how the guests are not clipping through anymore. The bin was placed inside. The bin stuck out due to its wanting to snap as being a path uh, extra. <coughs> Excuse me. And that bin is now covered up by the top of the, the, the sort of slightly ornate tops. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I was very happy when that all kind of worked out. This is all a little bit tedious and we, we do, um, yeah, we do, we do get there with this. This just takes a little bit of time. Oh, and as he knocks the microphone. So yeah, um, so as we are moving through now, this is, a, yeah, we're, we're still going along and putting in the topiary. We're copying and pasting a lot of sections in. Um, and, and this is all just coming along quite nicely. I might actually pop a cut in here, skip forward, and we'll cut some of this um, stuff out that is just being a little bit repetitive. I'll see you shortly. And in fact, a total change of plan there. We'll actually just keep this narration going for this little section. So uh, yeah, I've um, in the meantime, I've jumped out of, um, uh, I've jumped back into the video editing tool, and um, I'm, win I'm using Windows Movie Maker to put these uh, together. And it's a total learning curve for me. I, I, I don't actually know how to use any of this uh, software, um, and I'm really sort of struggling to um, trim clips um, at this stage. But um, hey. There's pulling back the curtain and just showing you a little bit too much, I think. So I might, um, uh, we'll just keep that little, uh, those little bits <laughs> to myself in future. Um, look, eventually, it's it's just like getting the um, the the time lapses done. That that was a, I didn't mind you guys coming on the journey with me on that. That was a struggle, and I I couldn't work out how to do it, and I. I played with the technology and I didn't panic. I knew at one point this will come to me. And so um, I feel the same with the recording of the uh, um, the audio and the putting together the music and things like that. I think eventually I will, um, yeah, I'll, I'll get that all sorted out. So in the meantime, you'll put up with me and my placing of a million little hedge bits in the uh, front section. So um, in the in the future as well, we we will jump around a little bit here. But um, uh, once we've um, put put a lot of these in, uh, we do go back and start to look at the um, the section that's got the buses going around it. So uh, I will also add in uh, another building at some point um, that will be at the front of the theme park, and that'll be for um, information desks. And of course, information desks serve a purpose in Planet Coaster. So I think they're the I think they're the key to adding in. Fast Fast passes, or they're the things that people go to to buy out, um, the equivalent of the fast pass or priority queuing. So on at least one of the rides, I'll need to pop a, a priority queue, and that's not too bad because on that temple, uh, on the temple ride, the yet to be named temple ride, um, the yet to be finished temple ride. Actually, that one is a <laughs> massive ride. I think I've bitten off quite a bit there, um, but yeah, I'll end up uh, actually popping that little bit of. Um, um, uh, priority queuing in at some point. Now you can see here me playing around with the studio pack uh, search lights and I do put them onto uh, the front of the hotel and I just go in and um, add in some floodlights because I don't want moving lights in the garden area. And of course, popping down those floodlights is, is a nice little um, idea before putting in any extra planting. Um, so the movable studio lights will make a comeback very, very soon. And uh, this is about to clip into the next audio bit. So um, I hope you're still enjoying this somewhat Frankenstein uh, bit of narration. Cheers.
And with the magic of video editing, we are back and doing a little bit of uh, planting now. So you can see in the planting box that we <clears throat> start to put in a little bit of a tropical thing, pop down some palms there and thought, wow, well, I don't know if I want this to be a lot of palms. Do I want it to be tropical? Do I want it, you know, that was a little bit last time with the adventure uh uh, stitch land or the was it the event whatever the adventure pack I can't remember the name of that park um, but that was previous um, and so uh, what I actually did here is I started getting these cactus and um, these are a, sort of like a prickly pear I don't know if I don't know if you guys call these a prickly pear but in Australia we have these weeds that have been obviously imported from uh, North America and they found their way into our country and they're they're not native but they're called prickly pears and they have these um, very pod Look, look, looks to them and that's that's the equivalent of what this is in the in in the um in planet coaster so i started to put those um plants down uh on the fence i have actually started to put in some ivy and that does grow around and uh yeah this is kind of good because it starts to fill in the areas i i'm just playing around with uh doubling up some of the ivy and trying to get some random shapes um, and then, yeah, not putting it all over the fence, but certainly putting it in places where it looks like to be growing like a weed. I, what, I, what I end up doing here is picking seven or eight plants and just going with that and and leaving it to, yeah, so I, so I kind of do what is what, what I'm terming mass planting. So I'm grabbing seven or eight plants and I'm putting sort of 30 or 40 in this little area of each of the plants, whether or not there's 30 or 40. I mean, there's probably slightly less. Um, and at the moment, we do have a little bit of yellow, which is nice. I don't mind that. I didn't bother changing the colour of any of those plants. Um, just so, zooming out there and um, having a look at a few other things. Uh, you can see here I'm also playing around with texture paints and I... Um, instantly when I make this change, I notice that... It does neaten up the area um, and uh, I, I can, you know, and by the way, ignore that spotlight. This spotlight at the front will be moved out. Um, here I start to um, carry on with textures outside the boundaries and start doing my own head in with this. It looks like a, it looks like a bushfire has come through and burnt the desert, um, which just is ridiculous. So I do come back and fix that up. Um, uh, I think... The red, the redness, um, the the desert sands was starting to um, mean that the area didn't look finished. So I wanted to put some some bitumen down and, and just kind of fix that. I've now discovered these lovely plants as well. And what are these ones called? Um, these are called ponderosas or whatever they are. They're they're lovely, and I like this kind of lilac or, or um, slightly purpley pink color. I think it's a, a little bit feminine. It's a little bit sort of, and as I say, I like them. I delete them. But what I end up doing is popping them back in um, in another section of this this gardening, just down towards um, the left hand side. So as we run along the fence, you'll see them make a little bit of a comeback. Um, I started to put these plants in here, and this is good because we've got a nice deep red in this, and. Um, so the idea is with these these plants, it's 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 desert bushes, it's it's bushes that aren't particularly ornate, and but they're they're basically um, could be found in the desert, could be found in theme parks that are based in the desert. So I, my idea is there's lots of them in one section and one or two in the other little sections, and they tie in together. Uh, I do like the idea of using rocks as well. I think rocks ties into the landscape. These might be rocks that. Uh, bought in by the theme park, um, the people who made this theme park. There might be rocks that were always there that were never excavated because the architect said, leave that in, that looks good. Um, so there's my theory on that one. i um, popping quite a few more of these uh, prickly pear type cacti around and um yeah this basically is just a whole lot of mass planting i did pop in some lights there too i made the uh, i think it was a wise move to put some floodlights in nice and early and then put the plants around and in fact what we do is we basically come in and put in um 20 or 30 more of these little prickly pears um and we can see there i've got at the moment one two if we skip the ivy i've got one two three four prickly pear yellow plant red plant i've got three different plants in there at the moment and that's it but you're still seeing a section that looks nice and full and um and yeah so I basically just spend time of course in these episodes you will if you've got a keen eye you, you'll notice that i don't completely fill out these sections um 
Uh, in a way, I'm glad I can't pop the grass in here because that's a real natural look to not put grass in. Actually, who am I kidding? I'd freaking love it if I had a grass texture in it at the moment. Um, and of course, here I am coming back here and, and just trying to um, uh, remove my, my, <laughs> my, a bit of my uh, desert burntness. Um, yeah. So then we... Uh, we go along and put some plants in here. And one thing I wish I had have done just here is just remove that slight tarmac paint that's under these current prickly pears that I'm placing. This here is something I probably, there we go. He did remove those. Um, so that, that's kind of good. Uh, just on the tram route as well, the tram goes too close to the hotel. I'm very aware. I like the shape of where it goes, but it goes too close to the hotel. Is those plans making a lovely comeback? I knew I'd bring them back. Um, yeah, but the, the tram at the moment is just, um, it's, I, I kind of like the, the, the new parts where the tram goes, but I don't like that it goes so close to someone's hotel and I'm going to have to build an ornate bridge um, and I'm really annoyed that I've <laughs> I've made myself at the moment build a um, uh, a curved ornate bridge because that's I, I, I will struggle to build a regular straight ornate bridge but um, now that I have to build a curved one it's it's going to need some redoing so I'm thinking if I can get a 45 degree angle in there in a bridge um, uh, that's what I think I think I need to um, uh, maybe a straight part an island bit and a straight part coming out of it at another angle and the curve will be on the island. That's probably how I'm going to have to do that, but I think I'm going to have to move the station a long way down. Um, but that's okay because the, the queue to the tram car path could be quite long and it could go along and see the the last parts of the ride. I don't mind if people see, you know, people getting off the ride and being all excited and, and um, yeah, so, so these are my theories on the tram car ride. There's so much to do in this theme park. It's um, it's kind of good though. I, I'm finding it a nice little pace at the moment. Um, I'm really enjoying um, I'm enjoying building and um, my mandate again, as I have said a few times, my mandate for this whole theme park was going to be yeah, um, building and not placing. Um, so that's that's pretty good. I hope you've uh, liked this little part of it. So that was the planting section there. And now we look at moving on to the front section. And at the front section, we are now, uh, I think we delete this, yes, and go. <laughs> now we just relocate it and um, I am gonna have those there for nighttime. Um, I might even put them in a little bit earlier because I'm finding that the front of the building's in shadow quite a bit and that fits, fits with my theme of my theme park. But I'm actually finding that um, uh, he probably does need a bit more lighting at the front um, and it will have a bit more lighting. I must remember to do lighting as, as, we, as we go as well. So I start to break up this front section and instead of putting in the car park, the new idea I had would be, this would be an entrance plaza and there would be a roundabout where buses might come in and they will drop people at the front of the park and there might be some taxis, there might be some sort of, um, you know, staff parking, maybe some emergency vehicle parking, but not nothing too ridiculous. Uh, here I've just realised that I've left the curbs, curbs off, um, so I just pop those curbs back on and I'm glad I glad I realised that. Um, yeah, things keep, keep switching things off and moving on and forgetting to switch them back on. But if we have a look here, um, I actually, yeah, my theory is going to be uh, a lovely um, a roundabout. I'm going to put some buses in. Uh, I'm going to then also put in um, a fountain inside the roundabout. And then I was actually thinking of maybe in this section on the left here, I, I want people to use these paths. And so I was actually thinking, well, how do I get people to use them and what do I do? And in, in, in a little bit, you'll see the... Uh, elegant solution, well, somewhat elegant solution that I come up with. So, um, yeah, well, I might just leave this section um, here and we will uh, pop some music on in the background so you can stop hearing me crap on about stuff. And, um, ooh, and I hope you, um, yeah, I hope you enjoy this music while you watch me build the front plaza section of this part of the park. Enjoy.
So I hope you enjoyed that uh, music. Um, I'm using all royalty free music that I downloaded. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you're enjoying that. I'm trying to put a bit of dance music in, a little bit of trance, a little bit of sort of, I don't know, this high energy kind of stuff. And I hope you enjoyed that as well. Um, yeah, so the bars, is, I've made some changes. I was a bit worried about right angles here and whether or not that actual fence is straight. Um, and I think in between episodes, I do make a couple more adjustments to the parts here. So I hope you really enjoyed this episode. Um, in between this and the next episode, I've actually made a, quite a few changes and I will bring you up to speed in the next episode. I don't want to spend three or four episodes on this front entrance plaza. So um, I will be doing a bit of this work off camera, but you do see the gist of it. I just want to put in the final details. Hit the like, hit the subscribe. I hope you enjoyed the episode and don't forget to leave me a comment and I'll see you in the next episode of Planet Coaster. Thanks for watching. Cheers and bye.